Just yesterday was a great day to be a Star Wars fan as we got the official Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker final trailer by, of course, director J.J. Abrams, Disney, and Lucasfilm during ESPN on, of course, Monday Night Football, specifically at halftime. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, today we will be going over fan reactions of the final trailer of Episode 9. For a lot of you guys that watch my videos, I will be going over what you guys had to say and reacting to your reactions, if that makes sense here. Because a lot of fans seem to have mixed reactions on the Rise of Skywalker trailer, and I would also really love to hear, you know, more of your reactions about what you thought about the trailer overall. Did you feel a bit let down or overly excited, let me know below in the comments. So I want to start off with the first one by Darth Nicholas, all right? Uh, states, I could not believe how underwhelmed I felt for this trailer, Mike. I feel like it did nothing for me emotionally. What were your favorite parts, if I may ask? Well, first thing, uh, Darth Nicholas, I like your username, I will say. Uh, the one thing about the trailer that I will agree with you that felt a little underwhelming to me at least, and I will agree with you that it felt underwhelming at times. Uh, the entire trailer, I will say, in its entirety was not underwhelming, but there were parts that just did not hit me personally. So, with that being said, I will say that... When we look at the trailer, I gotta say, it's the Death Star footage. Without a doubt, it's the Death Star footage that really makes me very happy about what I just saw. Uh, it brings me back to Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, where, you know, you kind of get the view of Palpatine's throne room in a different light. Yes, it kind of reflects on, you know, how it was already done in Return of the Jedi, but I will say that, you know, I do agree that there are parts in here that are quite underwhelming, as well as, at the same exact time, you know, very exciting as well. So, Darth Nicholas, I will say that, you know, I, I think that you're not alone, the fact that there are underwhelming parts in this trailer. I kind of felt the same in the very beginning, more so with the Resistance-related stuff, like the horses, um, you know, running on top of the Star Destroyer, or let's say, for example, when Poe Dameron is making the speech underneath the uh, 10T4. Uh, I think that elements like that in the trailer weren't really as exciting to me personally, but that's just me. Uh, moving over to Alejandro, I want to actually go with over he had to say. Hey Mike, at 121 of the trailer on the official Star Wars YouTube channel, uh, he states, I can hear C-3PO's breath. I don't understand. Droids don't breathe. Um, okay, so I have my headphones on right now, and if I listen carefully when he basically says, you know, I'm taking one last look at my friends, I can see what you're saying. There's a slight breath there. By Anthony Daniels and I'm sure they're gonna correct that later on in post-production it's barely noticeable though I'm sure that a majority of people around the world are not gonna notice something like that but I can totally hear exactly what you're saying about C-3PO uh, having that you know sound of him actually having like a breathing sound that's most certainly Anthony Daniels and most likely they got to fix some ADR work there uh, which is of course you know everything related to dialogue recording in post-production so they're gonna have to get on that Moving down here, Ben Wolf states, Why does Palpatine's throne look like that? Doesn't really impress me, but why did Disney choose that design? I'm not quite sure if I really agree with it. So, well, to answer your question, Ben, this actually dates back all the way to 1981, where there was a rough sketch by Ralph McQuarrie. I don't know if you ever saw it. But back in 1981, it's online, you guys can actually go ahead and look it up too. Um, online, you know, you can see the rough sketch back in 81, before Return of the Jedi was even a thing, where they basically gave you a rough sketch, Ralph McQuarrie's rough sketch of Palpatine's throne for Episode 6, with the spikes sticking out of each side. And that's actually now a part of The Rise of Skywalker. The main reason as to why we see it in this movie is because we already had, you know, Snoke's throne room with a symbol similar, you know, uh, throne itself already based on Ralph McQuarrie's artwork on one of Palpatine's other throne rooms. Uh, basically, Snoke's throne, in case you guys did not know and in case Ben did not know as well, uh, that actual throne was based off of Palpatine's other throne uh, for Return of the Jedi where he had a throne underneath the surface of an unknown world where it was actually surrounded by lava. And that throne itself was inspired for the design of Snoke's. So in order to do something very unique and different for JJ, he wanted to go back to the roots of Ralph McQuarrie, to the earliest sketches of Palpatine's throne. So 
I will respectfully disagree with you there, Ben, because I think that the design of the new throne for Palpatine and the Rise of Skywalker not only is amazing, but it's also something very unique and original that kind of changes things up a little bit and makes things uh, just feel a little bit more original for my taste at least, but thank you for asking. Kybertone asks, check out Palpatine, is he a droid now? What is he hooked up to? Mind explaining? So, I want to go into some of the spoilers slash leaks here, so if you don't want to be spoiled, Kyber, I do suggest that you exit out of this video right now. Uh, Palpatine is actually said to be in a weakened state for a majority of the film. We're talking about, of course, the first and the second act of the movie. You're going to get a different version of Palpatine. So, to answer your question about whether or not Palpatine is a droid, uh, most certainly not a droid, but there is, of course, going to be a major scene in the film, two of which, actually, that's going to feature Palpatine hooked up to this large crane system that is actually able to move forward. Now, this crane system was originally intended to be used on the original version of Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens. This crane system, this machine, if you will, has a mechanical arm piece that Palpatine's arm is going to go into. Essentially, you can think about it as a Star Wars version of a dialysis machine. And that's exactly what's happening here with Palpatine at the very end of the Rise of Skywalker trailer. So, though he's not a droid, but there is, of course, a piece of machinery keeping Palpatine alive in the process and that's going to be a very interesting part about episode 9. You know, I think that it would have made more sense to do this with somebody such as for Supreme Leader Snoke in The Last Jedi because of the injuries that he actually had, but very good question. I gotta say, um, you know, from all the leaks that we went over, Palpatine is indeed going to be in such a weakened state to the point where he's going to become very desperate to gain more power. Danny Willow states, man, after watching this trailer, I feel that the movie will fail to win audiences back over after The Last Jedi. Wasn't impressed. So, like I say, guys, we all have our own opinions, and that is perfectly fine and okay and all. Everybody has their points of view. I myself, you know, I will say that I had a lot of issues with The Last Jedi without a doubt. But Danny, going back to what Darth Nicholas said, he too also said that there were a lot of elements in this trailer that were very underwhelming. I would have to agree with that. For me, it was mostly for the Resistance related content, like I said before. Um, the one thing that I really loved about the Resistance was where we have the Falcon, we have uh, Han Solo's freighter in the background, we see the Ghost, we see U-Wings, we see X-Wings, Y-Wings, all the likes, right? Uh, that was my favorite part about the Resistance. Apart from everything else, I wasn't too impressed either about the resistance and how it was actually handled in the final trailer of this movie. In fact, I honestly will say that I got a little bit more excitement out of the first teaser trailer of The Rise of Skywalker where they kind of just had different type of music, you know, pretty much laid over the actual footage leading up to the Palpatine laughter at full blast. I feel like that that teaser had more energy to it. That's just my point of view. As for The Last Jedi, like I say, I also had a lot of problems with that film. And though I am still hopeful that this movie will carry fans back over... For those that had problems with Episode 8, it's still a big risk by Disney and Lucasfilm because they really do have to play their marketing correctly. Keep in mind, uh, everybody, that this is not the last piece of footage that we are getting. Yes, it is the final trailer, but we are going to be getting new TV spots, uh, new pieces of footage, new clips, if you will, in order to promote the movie. Usually they do the promotion of the clips in early December, just before the movie drops, like a couple of weeks beforehand, so keep an eye open for that. As far as everything else goes though, I mean, I'm really excited to see exactly how Disney's going to handle this throughout the month of November, how many TV spots are going to drop in comparison to The Last Jedi's, because The Last Jedi's we got tons of TV spots. Uh, we got about 26 of them, if I recall correctly, you guys may want to correct me on that, but last year, or should I say two years ago, <laughs> back in 2017, uh, it was around 26 TV spots, and we do know that J.J. Abrams said on the Howard Stern show a couple of years ago that... He hates doing that. He hates showing too much about a movie because it basically just ruins the experience and showing less means more. NW Chris says, okay, stop, dot, dot, dot. Why is a Star Destroyer lifting itself from under the ground? What's going on with that? Where is this? So to answer your question about that and to really go over that sequence as well as not just for you, MW Chris, but also everybody else in here, uh, is that that particular scene is on the world of Exegol. So 
Exegol, I'm going into spoilers once again based on the leaks. If you guys want to steer clear from that, once again, that's a warning. Um, but in the actual film, there's going to be a world called Exegol. This world is actually said to be very close to a place called the Beyond. Now, the Beyond is said to be the most powerful force nexus there is in the entire galaxy. Now, the shot that we're talking about, that M.W. Chris is talking about, is actually on the world of Exegol, where one of the Imperial Star Destroyers is actually lifting itself from underneath the surface of that specific world. So Palpatine in the movie is hiding all of his Star Destroyers underneath that world, and this is exactly when he's prepping for battle to destroy both the First Order and the Resistance. And that's another thing to keep your mind open here, is that there's not just going to be two two sides, all right, fighting each other, but there's also going to be three. So we have the Resistance, the new Sith Empire, and of course we have the First Order. Now there's going to be a part in time in which the First Order is going to borrow some of Palpatine's forces, but that's all going to begin to crumble as we go into the third act of the film. So Exegol, it seems like a very promising world. It's basically a dead planet full of lightning storms constantly striking, you know, on the ground. You can see that numerous times in the final trailer of the movie. So that's another thing to be excited about. Thank you, though. All right, now here's an interesting one. Now, Noah Nub says, are Rey and Kylo Ren joining sides? Well, I watched your breakdown earlier, Mike, and I noticed they were both destroying Vader's helmet on board of that ship. So, Noah, I will say that upon looking at the sequence between both Rey and Kylo Ren further after my breakdown, initially I believed that they were fighting each other, but if you look at it very close, you can see that from what it appears, they are indeed working together to destroy the Darth Vader podium. Not the exact helmet per se, but the podium for some reason perhaps. Um, from what I could tell, I can't see the Darth Vader helmet getting split into two or anything like that. So, though I do believe that this could very well be the very start of them acting more civil toward each other, uh, this could also be the moment in which it may appear, and just appear as if they are working with each other, where they both accidentally hit the Darth Vader helmet podium. That's still a possibility as well. Now, again, like I say, I mean, we do know that The Force Awakens introduced a lot of Darth Vader, you know, legacy content, the Darth Vader melted helmet. Uh, in the novelization, we learned more about how Snoke used Darth Vader basically as a way to manipulate Kylo Ren, basically promising Vader's power. And that's why Kylo Ren gets so upset, you know, when Rey says, you know, you'll never be as strong as Darth Vader. So Vader, at the end of the day, really is, you know, the very center of this story. He is directly, you know, what was responsible for the turn of Ben Solo to the dark side. It's the very root of it all. And that's what I like so much about Vader is that, you know, his spirit kind of still lives within the sequel trilogy to a certain level, you know, to a certain level, not literally in The Force Awakens and or in The Last Jedi per se, but it is the direct reason as to why Ben Solo found a form of inspiration to really move toward the darkness. Yes, the Knights of Ren recruited him, and yes, Snoke made the final push to make Kylo Ren a dark side user. Getting into more Rey and Kylo Ren stuff, Snape Ver 21 states, Now I'm confused. First, Rey says that her parents were nobody and that she is no one, but now in the trailer of The Rise of Skywalker, she says, People keep telling me they know me. No one does. Then Kylo says, But I do. So, Snape, I want to go over something here, and this is actually going to go into some of the leaks and or the spoilers. Once again, if you guys, or Snape, if you want to back out of this video right now, I do suggest that you do so. Uh, from the various leaks that we have been going over is that, yes, her parents are still nobody's quote-unquote per se. They're not going to be, you know, legendary characters that we already know about, like Luke, Leia, or Han Solo but that they are actual characters connected to another legacy character. Now, there's a lot of leaks out there that do indeed suggest that Rey is indeed the granddaughter of Darth Sidious slash Palpatine himself, which would then explain as to why she says in the trailer, in a very unique way, in almost a very uh, intimidating way in a sense, that's at least how I felt when Rey was saying this, where she states uh, what Snape said, of course, where she says, people keep telling me that they know me, no one does. And Kylo Ren says, but I do. This also matches up with the other leaks that we talked about, that Kylo Ren learns about Rey's lineage before Rey does, and that Palpatine is going to tell Kylo Ren to get Rey to bring her before him. 
So that's going to be a very interesting side of the story because not only would that be very poetic, it actually would be very poetic on the second Death Star wreckage where you have the grandson of Darth Vader fighting the granddaughter of Palpatine. It is very poetic. Do I think it would have been a little bit better if she was indeed a descendant of Obi-Wan Kenobi? That would have made more sense, I will agree. It would have made more sense in a way where you have, you know, the descendants of those who fought on Mustafar. Instead, they are fighting on the wreckage of the second Death Star. So, I would have been more satisfied with that decision. But I think the reason as to why they're choosing Palpatine here, you know, from the leaks that we have been going over, is that it's a way to justify Rey's power. Why she's so very powerful in the rise of skywalker and why she's also very powerful in the force awakens and in the last jedi and how she was really able to learn all these different powers you know such as the jedi mind trick or using a lightsaber in fact if you look very close at the uh, the force awakens battle on of course star killer base you will see that ray actually uses a similar move against kylo ren just as palpatine did inside of his conference room against mace windu and his crew you know his jedi that backed them up so there's that. The other thing is this, is that Kylo Ren is actually going to deliver a vital piece of information related to Rey's lineage in the second act of the movie, which does also line directly up with why he says, but I do, in the official trailer that we got just yesterday. So that's another thing to think about as well. Okay, so this one here is going to open up a couple of questions about the Force itself. Now, Windu Jackson 78 First off, I want to say your username, I love it. It almost sounds like that it's based off of, of course, Mace Windu and Samuel Jackson. I don't know if that was intended, but love the username. So he states, first off, Mike, Palpatine's voice is perfection by Ian McDermott in the trailer. Second, what does he mean that their undoing is because of them coming together? So, once again, this is also going to tap into the leaks and the spoilers that we have been talking about and Palpatine's brand new power that is going to be demonstrated in The Rise of Skywalker. So, this of course roots all the way to Palpatine's new power that is actually going to be called a Force Conduit, if you will. How Rey and Kylo Ren coming together is going to make Palpatine stronger. So, essentially, in order for the Force Conduit ability to work for Palpatine from the leaks that we went over a couple of months ago, is that, of course... This conduit power is actually going to be used because he's near the force itself, the actual force nexus that is called the beyond. Now, the beyond allows Palpatine to essentially bring himself back to a, a more youthful state, a more powerful state, if you will, while he's right now in a more weakened state where he's got to be hooked up to all these types of machinery against the wall, which is what we, what we got a little glimpse of in the Rise of Skywalker's uh, trailer today. Uh, but also, on top of all of that, this new ability called Force Conduit, Palpatine needs Rey, Kylo, and himself to be in the same exact room, basically a close proximity, in order to make this new Force Conduit ability to work flawlessly. So, him stating what you said there, uh, Windu Jackson, is that, of course, you know, when he means by when he says, you know, you coming together, you know, uh, now that you're coming together is your undoing, is essentially pretty much alluding to how Palpatine is going to use that power in order to draw the energy from both Rey and Kylo Ren to really bring himself to a younger state. And from what we heard, he's going to be younger in comparison to how he looked in Revenge of the Sith. Not quite sure if that means how he's going to appear before the deformities or how he's going to appear how he was already deformed in, of course, Revenge of the Sith. So that's a big question as well. But that's a very interesting question, right? You know, how them coming together is going to be their undoing, uh, how it does indeed match up with the leaks that we've been talking about, how Palpatine has this new power called Force, Force Conduit. Do I like the idea of the name of the power? I don't really agree with it. Force Conduit kind of sounds a little strange to me, but that's the power in itself. It's kind of similar to Luke Skywalker's Force Projection Technique, which sound a little weird to me, uh, just the way it sounds, uh, you know, how Luke Skywalker uses that ability. The technical term for it, by the way, was the doppelganger technique, which allows Luke to literally change pretty much, you know, uh, his appearance from across space and time, but he's not really there. 
And that ability, we went over that from the previous leaks a couple months ago, is that he learned that ability through the netherworld of the Force from his own father, Anakin Skywalker. So that's another thing to keep note of here. But anyways, I just wanted to go over some of your reactions of the Rise of Skywalker and some of the questions that were also embedded in those reactions to just make this a very interactive and fun video about the final trailer of Episode 9. So, if you guys did enjoy the content for today, uh, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.